Father, this morning we want to pray for all the prayer requests that have been made mention. We want to pray for this box of names and every prayer request that's in this box. We know, Lord, that there is a need for prayer. And we know that you answer prayer. And Lord, we thank you for all the answers that we get with us. Lord, we praise you for each one that's here in this service this morning because we know that you've made it possible for us to be here. And Lord, we also know that as we pray and as we offer up the prayer request that you do hear our prayers and that you do answer them. And for this we are very thankful. Lord, we just pray that you'll be with those that could not be in our midst this morning. For we know that you know each and every need, even before we ask it. And Lord, we thank you for your all-powerful knowledge of all the things that we need that you grant to us day in and day out. God, we want to pray for all those that are suffering, those that are ill, those that are going through surgery. God, we want to pray for every need in this community that's represented. God, we want to pray for the churches, each and every one that's meeting this morning. We want to pray for every Christian as they set out this morning to worship. Lord, we ask that you would clear our minds and help us to be receptive of your every word. Lord, may our faith grow stronger as we meet this morning. And may our love of you grow even more powerful as we begin to go forth each day and share with others how we know Jesus. That they too might come to know him as their Savior. Lord, help us to stand upon our faith and minister to all the needs round about us that others may have. Now, Lord, we ask that you be with us through this service as we turn to your word and as we strive to understand what you're telling us this day. Bless each one that's here, for it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> I want to talk this morning, using God's Word, to talk a little bit about are we Christian or not? Are we Christian or not? And so, if you have your Bibles, Turn to John, the 19th chapter. And I'm going to read the first six verses of the 19th chapter of John. And I'm going to be using this Bible that I've been using for a while, and I'm still not sure. I thought I had found a problem with it the other day, but it turned out. I wasn't reading the Bible just right. And so that got itself corrected. So I can't really use that. Sometimes, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to take the Bible and read a passage of Scripture and then I'll check it out. When we think we have found a problem, we need to check it out. Be sure before we speak or before we act. And so I'm going to read the first six verses of the 19th chapter of John and then I want you to, as you look and follow along in your translation, maybe to ask somebody to read a different translation. This translation, I've got to look to see exactly what it is. It's Christian Standard Bible and it's... Uh, Tony Evans' study Bible, like his name, it just went off the top of my head. Tony Evans' Bible, the Christian Standard Version. 
So listen to these six verses. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers also twisted together a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and clothed him in a purple robe. And they kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and were slapping his face. Pilate went outside again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know I find no grounds for charging him. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. Now Beth, I know that your translation is different. Would you mind reading that same scripture in your translation? One through four. One through six. You didn't finish. Oh, oh okay. All right. I'll, I'll get one through four. All right, okay. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him and again and again, saying, Hail the king of Jews, and they slapped him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. Okay. What I was concerned about was the slapping in the face. Uh, Karen, I know you have a King James version, right? Yeah. Would you mind reading Matthew 27? 27 to 31? Matthew 27? Matthew 27, yeah. Right. That's another one of the gospel accounts of this particular thing. Trying to set a scene here about how Jesus was treated and struck. Jesus there being stripped of his clothes in public, beaten with a staff or a leather strap with little bones or metal tied to the end, that his blood is being poured from his skin, from his body, and the awful pain and agony that he's going through. A crown of thorns, and those thorns, that crown of thorns, as it's pressed down upon his head, brings the blood and the pain. So the picture here is of our Savior, Jesus Christ, as he is being mocked upon, spit upon, slapped in the face, beat on the head with a stick. Savior went through for you and I. And that's the picture that we get. Now, I'm going to read the last two verses that I said I would read. Verses 5 and 6, right? When the chief priest and the temple servants saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate responded, Take him and crucify him yourself. 
since I find no grounds for charging him. Now all the crowd that had gathered around Jesus in that trial and period of flogging and humiliation, there must have been a lot of Jesus followers there, right? Now I've, I've asked our God sheep group saying that Christians were first called Christians and that's in the Bible. They were first called Christians in Antioch. Now it's not Antioch that gives them the name of Christians. So we might wonder, what is it? But I have a footnote in this Bible that I think says something very important. It was, it was in Antioch that disciples of Jesus Christ were first called Christians. That's in uh, Acts, the 11th chapter. And this is what it says. They were named for the one whom they worshipped and obeyed. every moment of our life, every day, day in and day out, 24-7? Well, that's the question. Are we Christian enough? We come to church, and I must say that this is a, this is a very faithful church because you're here most all the time. service that my son goes to outside of Kansas City. And they have a band on the stage. And they have about ten people across the front of the stage that leads the music. And it's all put up on the screens. No songbooks. In the views. You have to follow along. So 
So if you know it, you sing it. If you don't, you sit there. Most of the people there were just sitting there, listening to the group on the stage sing the songs, or standing because a lot of times they stand through four or five songs, one right after the other. Well, I don't know if that's wrong or right. But the question is, are we Christian enough? Because I think we're living in a day and age when we have to suddenly begin to think about, am I for Christ or am I against Christ? Christians should pray. But I think we are doing a good job of praying. I don't know if we pray consistently or if we have persistent prayers. But I wonder, because is our church growing as God would have it to grow? Maybe not in number. But are we growing spiritually strong through our times of prayer? You know, in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, beginning with the 20th verse, we find that Elijah, we studied Elijah here uh, in our midweek Bible study. And Elijah, it says, took the lady's son and carried him to an upper room. And there the scripture says he cried out to the Lord. And because that he cried out to the Lord, the boy was returned alive to his mother. Maybe we're not crying out enough, or we're not crying out loud enough. I don't think that God has a hearing problem. You know, every once in a while, I've got, got to turn off the TV or turn up my hearing aids or turn them down if it gets too loud. So maybe God's not in that situation, I'm sure. For He hears our prayers. And we know He hears our prayers because we have witnessed the answers to those prayers. But I'm wondering... Sunday school lesson, and Karen just kind of touched on it a little bit uh, in the opening. It talked about this preacher who was preparing his sermon Sunday morning, or Thursday. Preparing his sermon Thursday for Sunday. I'll get it right correctly. And there came a knock on the door. And as he looked out the window, he saw a bed to write on the transient at his front door. He saw his pickup parked out on the front with all of the person's possessions in that pickup. And so he invited the fellow to come in because he wanted to see what it was all about. Knowing that he didn't have much time, he hurriedly sent the fellow on his way and told him to go down to the store and fill his truck up with gas and get himself a few groceries. And then he called the store to tell them he would be down later to pay the bill. But then he said as he went back to doing his sermon, he wondered, was he being Christian enough? Well, not exactly in those words. But... He was wondering, did I do the right thing? Was my attitude in the right place? And that's why I thought about Are we Christian enough sometimes? When we fail to help those, or we fail to take the time to witness when it's presented to us? Do we even take the time to pray like we 
should. Or to study the Bible like we should. Or do we pass over because we only have about an hour's time? Or we can only lend the person to come in for a few minutes. And we talk about the weather or other things. So are we being Christian enough? You don't have to decide about this preacher if he had the right attitude or what was going on when he sent the fellow on his way. He did buy him gas and give him a few groceries. And I suppose he went down to the store later and paid the bill. Or they might send the cops after him. So you decide if this preacher who had more time to prepare his sermon for Sunday did the right thing. That he was Christian enough. In the chapter and verse 40, it says, Did it to one of the do it to one of the least of these my brothers and sisters? You have done it unto me. Jesus said, When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you took me in. When I needed clothes, you clothed me. When I was in prison or sick, you visited me. If you have done it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. You know, we do the shoe boxes. And we're on the we're on the scope of doing one more shoebox each year than the year before. I wonder, is that enough to classify us? We do the Osage Christmas thing. We just made a contribution to the Sunshine School Academy that's going to start in August in Owensdale. And did we do it because we want to help the little kids? The parents who cannot send their kids to school but are trying very desperately to give their kids a good Christian education. At least that's what I'm telling everybody. <laughs> and especially the one who is leading this up, early to Campbell that we did it because we want to help those little kids. Not that we want to meet out some of the bigger churches who haven't given anything yet towards this cause. We bought plans to help out those who couldn't uh, get along without any heat or without any cool air when the summer was hot. And by the way, I think it's going to get hot again before it gets cold enough to not be without a fan. We helped in both camps to see that there was a great both camps that little kids and young teenagers had a chance to hear the gospel and decide whether they make a decision. Does this all make us Christian enough? Or is there more that we need to do? We're working on the five mile card. And because the missionary and his wife have been <laughs> out, I haven't been able to get that cute code put on there, uh, on the card. So we, we're still at a, a standstill as far as getting the five-mile cards out. We sent out 291 cards earlier, and of those 291 cards, only those of you here that live within the five-mile radius have received the cards. Maybe two other people that I visited might have got the card. So we're taking another stab at doing something with those five mile cards. And we are praying. And I hope we're praying consistently that God will use this system to his glory. In John's Gospel, uh, at the very end, how many of you know what an epilogue is? 
an epilogue. go out and tell those who you come in contact with who do not believe that this is the only way to heaven is through Jesus. And you have to make the decision whether to follow him or not. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for giving us your word this morning that all we need to do salvation is believed 